Welcome to Inspire Campfire, a podcast where ordinary people tell their stories of extraordinary adventure. These are campfire stories meant to inspire the rest of us to light the fire within, get outside, follow our dreams, and return to tell our own stories. Ready? Let's strike the match. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Scott Wurzbacher, and today we are going to talk about answering the call to adventure in your own backyard. Our guest is Matt Snyder, and he's an entrepreneur, father, husband, and of course, an adventurer. Over 15 years ago, Matt became disenfranchised with corporate America and decided to take things in a little different direction. He's now the co-owner of Wine Store, headquartered here in Charlotte, a rapidly growing retail wine merchant that opened its first store in 2006 and is currently up to eight stores across North Carolina. Matt was born and raised in Elkin, North Carolina, and adventure runs deep in his blood. Today, he's going to talk about how adventure was part of his childhood, how he continues to answer its call as an adult, and how his adventure spirit has helped him grow his very successful venture, Wine Store. Matt, my friend, welcome to the campfire. Thanks, Scott. Really happy to be here. Yeah, man. Well, um, I tell you, just for our listeners, do you mind just giving us just a quick overview of the life of Matt Snyder here in Charlotte? What does uh, what does day to day look like for you? Yeah, sure. Um, so, as you mentioned, I'm the kind of wine store. We're a small wine retail, um, kind of small chain based here in Charlotte. We've got eight stores across North Carolina, kind of stretching from Asheville all the way to Wilmington with, uh, with three here in Charlotte and a few in the Triangle as well. So that takes up a good amount of my, uh, of my day-to-day time. Um, I've got a great family here, uh, my wife, Margaret, and my son, Roan, and my daughter, Caroline. So with, uh, with sports and all kinds of outdoor stuff going on, you know, that's, uh, that's, kind of, that's pretty much me. So, uh, you know, working and then trying to get outside as much as possible. Um, those are my, those are my things. <laughs> yeah. So, so all of that going on, you have a super busy life. You're an entrepreneur, you have a business, a family, you got young kids, but yet adventure is, it runs deep with you. And, uh, you know, I always see posts on your social media of different trips that you're on, whether it's a hunting trip or a trip with your family, or always seem to be, um, making adventure a priority. And I'm just curious, uh, a, how do you fit that into your busy lifestyle? And, you know, B, like, what is it that, that calls you to make sure to make the time for those things? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm very much a person like I like routine. I like mm-hmm. schedule. I think, you know, most folks, you know, get themselves into a pattern of work and life and, you know, doing the things that you do on a normal basis. Um, for me, what truly makes me happy is finding time to kind of like get outside those normal patterns. Mm -hmm. Um, And I try to fill as much of that time as I can with things outdoor, with the pursuit of adventure. Um, I think, you know, what really makes me happy is finding adventure locally. Like maybe it's in your backyard, maybe it's in you know, we, we, we live in, or I live and you live in this wonderful state of North Carolina and there's just so much to offer. And I feel like even um, I'm 42 years old. I just haven't even scratched the surface of <laughs> finding, you know, adventure right here where we live. So. There's so much, there's so much here in this beautiful state and, uh, and you've seen a lot of it. So can you talk to us about just like some of the, maybe the more recent adventures that you've done here in North Carolina? I know you have a couple of things that you do sort of as tradition, and then you've done some other things, but like, just again, for context, what are some sure. of the kinds of adventures that you like to take? Yeah. So I grew up, um, as you mentioned in Elkin, North Carolina, I grew up on actually a little community right outside of Elkin called State Road, North Carolina, and that. That little community is about 20 minutes from the Blue Ridge Parkway. Mm -hmm. Um, So you think like kind of, you know, an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes west of Winston-Salem, like heading northwest. Mm -hmm. Um, There you have Stone Mountain State Park. You have Dalton Park. um, You've got all these great places to visit, um, which are within a couple hours drive of Charlotte. 
Um, Stone Mountain State Park is, is near and dear to my heart. It's actually a, a granite bald, they call it. So it's an exposed granite mountain that you can hike from top to bottom in half a day. Um, great camping up there. There's fly fishing. Um, so, so Stone Mountain is definitely uh, near and dear to me. Um, another place that, that I visit regularly is, um, is a little spot called Lake Tahoma, and mm-hmm. that's near Marion, North Carolina. Uh, my, my mother has some, some property there, and there's about 30 houses surrounding a small lake, and the property is about 5,000 acres um, that is shared amongst those, wow. those 30 homeowners. So, and it's a cutout of Pisgah National Forest, so you've got hiking, you've got you know, great fishing, boating um camping like it's just it's it's wonderful so you know those are my two my two places i probably visit on you know the most regularly but uh but as i was saying before like i haven't even scratched the surface in north carolina like, i'm always trying to find that next adventure um i've got an, i've got one coming up here in may i'm hiking uh, mount Leconte, which yep. is another one of my favorites um it's in the great smoky mountain national forest it's a uh the, the park service runs a group of little cabins right on the top of Mount Leconte. So every October, or not, I think it's October 1st, you can put in for the lottery system to get a one night stay on top of Mount Leconte. So you hike up in the morning, you stay up on the top of the mountain and in, in these cabins, there's no electricity, all oil lamps, and it's, you know, hand pumped water. Mm-hmm. Llamas carry all of the supplies up from the bottom of the mountain. So it's really a really super cool thing that like I'm not a, well, not a lot of folks know about it. Like this is like three, three and a half hours from Charlotte. Like it's a really, it's a really neat adventure. Um, so I'm look, really looking forward to doing that. In yeah, you, you got me really pumped about that one. Cause uh, you know, I, I you, you know that I went and climbed Mount Kilimanjaro recently yes. and you know, we had porters there. And when I yeah. heard that you have porters called llamas yeah. on Mount Leconte, that's pretty cool. I love that. Yeah. What a it's cool experience. Neat. I had no idea that 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 was even a thing. And uh, you got me all excited about doing that. But that's a that's a that's one of the trips that you've been doing regularly. Yeah. So um, I have done that uh, several times. And it's really like you talk about like breaking out of your normal kind of like uh, environment and pattern. I was I was looking I'm going in the first week in May. I was looking at what the weather would be like um, mm-hmm. and it can still snow up on top of the mountain in May, which you think about in North Carolina, like, how can that be? How can it be 80 or 90 degrees at the bottom of the mountain and then a high of 40 when you get to the top? So it's pretty neat. I mean, that's, that's, you know, it's it's definitely a uh, kind of out of the, out of the norm experience. Yeah, it's, it's definitely on my list and it sounds like it's a pretty, pretty hard to get. You said you had to get on the phone. There's one day a year. I think you literally speed dial. Yes. You gotta, you gotta put them on speed dial and, uh, and, and I track, Every year I track how many times I have to call before I before I get through. And this year it was I called 110 times before. <laughs> 110 times before I got through. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, um, so who, who do you do this trip with? Is this something you take your family? Is this something you do solo? Yeah. Uh, so it's been in the past. It's been my brother um, and our other our mutual friend Lon. Okay. Um, kind of going to be on a three guy trip. Um, this year I'm taking my buddy, Will Lavender on the trip. Okay. So, uh, and he's really looking forward to it as well. Um, I think, you know, with the, with how strenuous the hiking is, cause it is that there's, I think there's four or five different routes to the top. Um, the one we take is probably the shortest. So you get the most time spent on top of the mountain. I want to get up there and, and hang out. Um, I'll probably wait another year or two before I take the kids just because it's a, uh, it's no joke. Strenuous yeah. hike. Yeah. yeah it's it sounds trendy. awesome. I, I'm, yeah. I'm super pumped. So, yeah. you know, in some of these experiences that you've talked about that you've kind of made a regular thing in your life, I heard you specifically point out multiple times, hiking, camping, and fishing. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm guessing those are the, those are the activities in the mountains and in the woods that you like to do the most. And I'm curious, like what happens to you when you're in that environment? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think it's important to to note too, like I, I started my, my outdoor pursuit is at a really young age. Um, growing up where I did in kind of rural North Carolina had all of these great places and activities to take advantage of right out my back door. Um, I really started in like m- mountain biking and whitewater kayaking were like my really my first two like loves 
yeah. really, really young age. Um, I got my first kind of real mountain bike when I was 12. I got my first kayak when I was 14. And I would go on these, on these, you know, kayaking trips and mountain biking trips all here in North Carolina and then some in like West Virginia. But that was, um, those were my favorite activities. And as I got older, I kind of like, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of time to maybe take a weekend trip to do a kayaking trip. Like I would try to find activities that were more readily available and that were, and that was, that turned into fishing and hiking and camping and things like that. So, so, so help me out here. If I'm reading this, like these were things that were really near and dear to you as a kid. And to some extent, as an adult, we're, we're just trying to pull that inner child back out and be able to go do That's some right. of those things that you love so much. So Matt, I mean, with that, let's go to childhood. Let's talk yeah. about that. Because sure. you, you had some pretty awesome experiences in the yeah. woods as a kid that you were telling me about. You, you know, when we when we talked before the show about what we what, you know, kind of what my story was, like what what that part of my life meant to me. Like I really I took a step back and I spent, you know, several days like really kind of going back through my childhood experiences and my memories. And, you know, kind of came to this realization like, whoa, maybe I had maybe my childhood was a little different than uh, than a lot of other guys and yeah. maybe girls, too. You know, I. Growing up in the middle of nowhere, my parents like gave me a pretty big leeway to like go out and explore. Yeah. You know, I would, uh, you know, at, at the age of 10, you know, I was going out in the morning, packing a backpack full of full of gear, going out, hiking, exploring, probably within five or six miles of my house. You know, it's rural. There's yeah. mountains, there's cow pastures, there's, you know, all these different places that you can explore and, you know, I'm going out, I'm making a campfire, I'm cooking, you know, I'm staying out till, you know, right at dusk, right before I know I'm going to probably get in trouble and I'm hightailing it back <laughs> to the house. You know? yeah. So these are normal experiences. Like I, I really felt comfortable by myself out in the woods. Yeah. Um, you know, that was really, really special to me. And I would do some hunting. My parents, you know, allowed me to hunt a little bit and, you know, it was, it was really neat. Um, you know, from there, that kind of like childlike wonder of being out in the woods, you know, it really started with a, uh, with a movie I saw. My mom would let me rent a movie from the public library from time to time. Nice. And I found this, I found this, I remember, I remember the cover of this VHS tape and it had kid. He's wearing like buckskin clothing. He had like a falcon on his shoulder. I'm like, okay, I'm a 10 year old kid. I'm like, oh, this looks good. <laughs> and the movie, the movie was called My Side of the Mountain. And so I took this movie home and it's all about this kid who kind of like, you know, lives in New York City, is kind of tired of the hustle and bustle, runs away to his grandfather's property in the Catskill Mountains and lives off the land. And he, he's like, lives in this whole, lives in this hollowed out tree. So I'm thinking to myself, 10 years old, whoa, this is really cool. Yeah, I gotta do something like this. And so that's when I started kind of going out and exploring my local area. And, uh, you know, it was neat. Like it really it kind of set the tone for my for my life or, you know, for my outdoor pursuits. Yeah. I, so I, you actually had texted that to me this morning and I, I looked it up. So I think it was like 1967. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, my, it was, uh, the public my, library wasn't exactly carrying the, uh, the, oh, man. the, the new titles. <laughs> some, of the, some of the best movies though, my side of the mountain, 1967, you can bet my family's going to be watching it, but yeah. you know, you and I were together recently and you kind of painted a visual. You, you said that you would go out in the morning and you'd stay out all day and, mm -hmm. and, uh, your parents gave you a lot of leeway. You did some hunting, but you, one thing that you shared with me is like you actually would take a rifle with you as a 10 year old kid yeah. out into out into the woods. And, you know, yeah. I think today some, some parents would be like, Oh, you know, no, but I mean, this was, and so like you're out in the woods by yourself yeah. with a rifle, just, I mean, I got to believe that like, this was a huge confidence builder for you. And it's something that kind of helped you. It's funny because uh, yesterday when I told my wife that you and I were having this conversation, I told her that story. And the first thing that she said is she goes, Oh, it sounds like the hunger games. That's <laughs> right. It kind of is Katniss Everdeen going out in the woods, but it's Matt Snyder doing the same, but you know yeah. what, what did, what did that do for your sort of confidence and your own belief in yourself when you're out in the woods like that? Sure. Um, you know, I think it, I think it taught me that I, that I could be comfortable in my own skin, that I could spend time in my own thoughts and by myself and really, uh, and be okay with that. I think, you know, this day and age, there are a lot of things in the world that maybe cause kids anxiety, right? Um, my way of dealing with 
the pressures of being a kid or the anxiety of, of things I encountered in, in my childhood were to go outside. That was breaking that pattern of, you know, stuff I dealt with as a kid and not bad things, but just, you know, pressures that kids feel like, yeah. am I accepted by my peers at school? Am I going to be good at sports? Am I going to be good at maybe at a, a musical instrument band? Like, you know, those, when I got out in the woods, that was my way of calming down and de-stressing and, and taking all that anxiety out of my life, being able to lay back. I mean, I can remember a very vivid memory of within a few miles, like I built a little, shelter made a little fire and i just was leaned back and just staring up at the trees and the tree it was mid-fall and the trees were just swaying back and forth and it was complete peace you know and i think i've really i think that memory is so strong with me i think i'm i'm just i'm constantly chasing that feeling in my in my adult life that complete, is that, that inner peace, peace. <laughs> peace. it is it is yeah. and, and so here's something that, that that i heard you say that i loved you talked about I would be out in the woods, you said, in my own skin and in my own thoughts. Yeah. And like, I feel like that's profound in today's day and age, because I think a lot of us are not comfortable in our own skin and not sure. comfortable in our own thoughts. And the way that we avoid those things is through, you know, Netflix and social media. Yeah, right. And like, that's the way that we distract our minds from those things is instead of like confronting them and facing them. Like we just go to that. I mean, and then as you get older, it becomes other things like, you know, uh, but it's, uh, I just think it's, I think it's really, really profound that, that you're able to do that in the woods and, and become comfortable with yourself. Sure. Yeah. I, I do agree with you. Like, you know, the stimulus of screen, screen time and working behind a computer all day. Like, I think you do get, it's easy to get trapped in that space. Right. And breaking that cycle and getting outside, whether it's just camping in the backyard with your kids mm -hmm. or walking on the greenway in, in the town that you live in, or, you know, just finding a, a local trail. Like I do think it does wonders for your mind and for, you know, for your, for your spirit and your body, you know, like it's just, it's just good all around. Yeah. So as a kid, you, I mean, and you painted that picture, you had this specific moment when you were laying in yeah. the woods watching the tree sway and you felt yeah. an inner peace and then yeah. i heard you say you've been chasing that yeah you know and that changed a little bit you know yeah. in my teenage years as i think a lot of teenagers may be you know you have this kind of feeling of uh, maybe i'm invincible mm -hmm. and i'm gonna and i changed my outdoor pursuits to kind of like seeking adrenaline fueled yeah. activities totally um, I did some trips to the New River Gorge, the Golly River in West Virginia, did some whitewater kayaking up there. Uh, we would go to um, the Nantahala Outdoor Center in Bryson mm -hmm. City here in North Carolina. I would pad I paddled that river a bunch. Like, so I was after that more kind of adrenaline yep. rush, but it's still coming out the backside of that, of those activities. I would still feel that like, okay, wow. Like I've, I filled my bucket up, you know what I mean? Like I've, I'm feeling good now. Um, yeah. And that was really important to me. There's a sense of accomplishment that comes with those sort of things. It's almost like, you know, you're beating, you're beating the river, you're beating, you know, yeah. whatever it is that you take on. That's right. Um, and it gives you a different, a different feeling of, of confidence really, you yeah. know, of being it able is. to be capable different stage of life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So now, so, you know, that was kind of childhood and the teenagers, like, so what calls you to adventure now as an adult? Yeah. So I think now that I'm, I'm, I'm married, I have kids, I want to, I'm very sensitive to the fact that I live in a big city. Right. Yes. And I live in the suburb of a big city and my kids can't go out that back door and hike four or five miles because they would be in on a major road or they'd be in somebody else's backyard or, you know, like, so I'm very sensitive to finding activities for them that maybe would spark that sense of adventure, right? Like this, to see if they would like it, to see if, you know, Hey, let's get outside and try this to kind of, get away from the iPads and get away from the video games. And, you know, so like I've, while I do enjoy these adventures on my own, like I'm way more focused on sharing this adventure 
lifestyle with my family. Um, we've got spring break coming up and we're going to go back to Stone Mountain State Park and do some camping up there just because it's such a special spot. And I want to share that with them. And I'm not and I don't want to sound like I'm forcing this on them, but I want to provide that opportunity for them and then they can make their own decisions on whether that speaks to them or not. Yeah. You got to get them in the position to be able to lay in the dirt and look up at the trees and see them swaying right. and, and feel that that's peace right. for themselves. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and they both, and both of my kids uh, are, have the ability to, to, they go to summer camp in the mountains every year. And I think it's there. Like I see them both come back from, um, from these summer camps and they're like, I was outdoors. I was out in the woods the whole time and it was amazing. So I'm, I'm, I think, I think they enjoy it, but like you said, you just want to like, you know, provide them opportunities and then hope they, uh, hope they stick with it. Yeah. So you've had some experiences as an adult that where you've sort of paired adventure with some other things. And so, you know, some of the things that you've mentioned to me was, you know, some experiences with your dad, you've talked about using yeah. adventure to overcome grief. Like, you know, can you talk about some of those experiences? Yeah, yeah I sure can. Um, and that, you know, that really goes back to my younger years too, you know, I think, I think a lot of folks when they experience, you know, something that's traumatic in their life, whether it be, you know, something that happened at school or, you know, you broke up with a girlfriend or a boyfriend, like, you know, people deal with those experiences different ways. Right. And my way of dealing with something, you know, that was stressing me out or something bad happened was to get outdoors because I knew that would flip the switch for me and kind of take me out of that place of like, oh, I'm feeling bad about myself and really kind of like, you know, provide some self-confidence. Um, and that happened in high school, you know, I had to break up in high school, I had a breakup in college and I would always take myself outside to like make myself feel better. Um, you know, one really, you know, you know, experience that was really hard for me was I lost my dad when I was 27 years old. Um, yeah just as I was kind of like starting my career and I was getting ready to get married and kind of like I was entering that kind of like, you know, adult, really adult phase of my life. Um, I lost him. He's 59 years old. It was really tough. Um, you know, he had lung cancer and it was a, and it was a long, hard battle. Yeah. He, um, right before he passed away, I think he kind of knew, it was the end and he kind of, you know, he perked up for, a, for a couple of days and he, and he came to me and he was like, you know, I want to like share a good meal and a bottle of wine. And, you know, I can't say it wasn't, he was a man of a few words, but he really, I could tell he wanted to like, just do something, the two of us. Um, and, and I was already, uh, I was already in the wine industry. So he knew I, I loved wine. Um, and I, so I went and got a really special bottle of wine. Yeah. Um, from the Gill family, um, they're based in Spain. This bottle called El Nido. It's really hard to get. Okay. And so I sat down. I made a big plate of spaghetti for both of us. He loves spaghetti, and we drank this wine. And we didn't even say much, but just being with each other, it was. Um, sorry, <laughs> it brings on emotion for me. Um, it was. It was important. Like it's. It's. It's cemented in my mind as like one of those like special moments with my dad. Um, and so he passed away. Um, I don't think it was either a day or two later. And you know, months later, as I'm trying to like you know find my path through this grief, you know, I'm thinking to myself, how am I gonna? How am I gonna deal with this? And you know, something spoke to me like that bottle of wine, that that symbolic glass of wine I shared with him. You know, I said to myself, I want to see where this was made. Like, I want to go to this place and I want to know everything about this one particular wine that he so enjoyed that we both enjoyed together. Yeah. And I had the chance to travel to Southeast Spain in this um this little region, it's about four and a half hours Southeast of Madrid. Okay. And when I say it's in the middle of nowhere, it is in the middle of nowhere. It's, it kind of looks like, um, the monument Valley and, uh, out West it's got nice. these buttes and it's kind of arid desert. And, um, the, the landscape is really cool. And out of nowhere, these 
big old knotty vines grow up out of the desert. Um, some, of them, some of the vines have to drill holes through bedrock 40 feet deep for these vines to go down and find water. So it's like, it's this really unique thing. Um, and so I went and I visited this place and I met the winemaker and I told him the story about my dad. And, you know, we really, we, we shared a moment there. Um, and I came back and, you know, and I, and I, and I think I was peeling kind of those layers back Yes. From, from this, from this grief that I'd been, that I've been dealing with. Yeah. Um, and this was years later after my dad passed away. And I think that really like having that chance to hike through these, these vineyards and being out in nature, like it helped, it helped heal me in a way. Um, yeah. so really, really special, special moment for me. Yeah. It sounds like it. And it, it just sounds like, again, you were able to go back to that place of peace in that nature, That's right. but it kind of, you know, again, kind of brought you back to those like comfortable feelings of childhood. Yeah, really, it really did. It really did. One, one, one thing I just wanted to kind of ask you about, because you said uh, when you were trying to make that decision is going, going to find out where the wine was made. You said mm -hmm. something spoke to me. Yeah. And I'm just curious, can you kind of elaborate on what that was like? I mean, was it like a feeling inside or was it like a voice you heard or? Yeah. And, I, and that's a good point. Like, you know, anytime, and this has kind of been a constant in my life. Like I will, I will get myself, I wouldn't say a rut because my life is not a rut. I have a great life. I really do enjoy my life, but I get myself into a pattern and maybe it's the things that I know I need to do, but maybe it's not all the things I want to do all the time. Right. Like I want to be out outdoors and stuff. And so it's like, it builds up, it builds this feeling up in myself. And then I'm like, okay, you know what? I got to like scratch the itch. I got to get out and do this for myself because it, it's just important to me. Um, and I felt that with going to Spain, it was unavoidable. Like I would think about it and then it would, you know, I would go about my daily life. And, but, but over time it just kept popping up. Like, and then it was popping up like on a daily basis, like, Matt, you got to do this. You have to go and see this place and an experience where this thing came from because I think subconsciously I knew I needed to heal and I knew that was going to be part of the healing process for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like a lot of other things, you know, adventures I've had, like, I just knew I needed to do it. And mm -hmm. I knew that if I didn't do it, it was just going to keep like presenting itself. Yeah. Until I did it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Not, yeah, no, it totally does. I mean, it was sort of repeated. It wasn't just like a one time thing. It sort of kept coming back to you. That's right. And I think like, I think this is, this is part of the hero's journey, right? We have this, we, we, we get these callings and then sometimes we sort of resist them. And I, I guess like for that one in particular, did you experience any like doubting thoughts or fears that were like, Oh no, I can't do that. Um, yeah, I, I did. I did because I think I was probably scared. To, yeah. to maybe what sort of emotions that I was going to provoke from me when I, when I, when I was finally there. Um, I think that, you know, I, I really felt compelled to go, but, you know, I think there was a, I think with any big adventure, I think, you know, there's probably, you're a little bit nervous because it's outside of your norm, like what your normal life is. Um, and I think it's easy to, compress that and say, okay, I'm going to put it off because maybe I'm not ready yet, or maybe I'm not physically ready for the challenge, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta roll the dice and go, man. Yeah. Go do it. Yeah. So you, so you, and that's it. I mean, like in the face of, and I think that's what courage is, right. But in the face yeah. of those fears and doubts, you just decided to go anyway. That's right. And so like, I mean, did any of those fears that you had like come to fruition? Like what happened when yeah. you actually got there? I think probably what I was most fearful of was, you know, just confronting my grief. Yep. Um, Cause I think, you know, I had just been chipping away at over the years since his passing. Um, and I knew like, I knew I needed to take a big chunk of it out. You know, I needed to like continue to heal. And I was very nervous just reliving those memories in the place where this wine was born and grown and produced. And, you know, I think once that, once it was, once I was there and once I kind of like spent a few hours out in this vineyard, just like processing where I was and how impactful this was on my life, I think I felt a lot better coming out the, coming out the backside of it. Um, and I shared a lot of it with my wife when I got home and, you know, 
it was important. It was important to do, but it was really scary. Right. Yeah. It was, it was an adventure and it was healing. And, right. and so I think it's interesting how so much of this ties together. And I want to like, I want to see if we can connect some dots here. Cause you've got this sure. adventure spirit. You went on this healing adventure, but yeah. it happened to be in the wine industry, which is the business that you chose to go in. And so I kind of want to just go real, real quick to that sort of transition where you were um, working in a corporate role and just decided that you were going to make this big leap of faith and and get into the wine business and become yeah. a small a small business entrepreneur because sometimes adventure isn't just about going out into the woods sometimes adventure is like taking a leap of faith like that so yeah. I'm curious you just share a little bit about that adventure of making that transition from you know from a, from a corporate job into an entrepreneurial venture yeah, no, and I do agree with you. Like adventure comes in many different forms, right? Um, I worked in corporate America. I worked for one of the big banks here in Charlotte. You know, I think that the job I had and the amount of work I was putting in, like I knew that was probably just for me, not something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that I needed to challenge my way myself in other ways. Um, my business partner was actually my wife's next door neighbor um, in a condo complex they lived in before we nice. got married. And he had moved down from Washington, DC to start this wine retail concept. And, you know, one night we were just hanging out and he's telling me about it and, and he had already, he had gotten the store started. Yep. And, you know, you talk about that call to adventure, that sense of yeah. I, that spoke to me. I was like, Whoa, <laughs> I got to find a way to get involved with this. Because yeah. I felt bogged down by my, by my job. And I, and, 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 and we talked about earlier, like it was almost like an itch I needed to scratch. Like I've mm -hmm. got to do something for myself, something to where the work I'm putting in, I can see the results of my own hard work. Um, and I needed that. I needed to take that leap of faith for myself so I could build this, you know, so I could build this thing for myself and, and see, you know, where it took me. Right. Um, I do have to, I do have to, to say that without Margaret, my wife, I would not have been able to do this. Like yeah. she is always my rock, but really during that time, you know, it was, it was super beneficial to me to, to have her to say, you know what, follow your dreams, follow this, this thing that you got to do for yourself um, to make this, this leap of faith to, 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 to help start this business. And, you know, and I'm glad I did, like, it's been a lot of work. It's been really hard, but the, I've never felt bored in this pursuit, right? Yeah. Like it's always been adventure um, and it's an ever changing industry. And I've never, I never feel like, Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Why this is so boring? Like it's always something that's keeping me glued to it. So I love it. Well, um, I want to give a shout out. Really I want to give a shout out to your wife because Margaret is an incredibly strong and brave human yeah. being, and she inspires me. And so it's funny because I was kind of as you were talking, formulating a question in my head, and I was gonna ask you, how did you know when you said you got that call? It was like a, a calling, like, I want to get involved in this. Yeah. But then you went on to say that if it wasn't for Margaret, and so it kind of made me realize like you know, sometimes you hear the call to adventure, but you have this, you have these fears and doubts. And thankfully, sometimes there's somebody standing right there next to you to help you see it. <laughs> so yeah, that's exactly I, right. Yeah. Um, I try to do the same thing with my, like with my kids too. Like, yeah. you know, with their, if they're thinking about trying a new sport or like, you know, thinking about taking up an activity, like I try to be the best I can to promote that sense of, Hey, step outside your comfort zone, take a chance. Even if you don't get the results that you're looking for, at least you tried. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so sometimes we have a hard time hearing that call to adventure. Sometimes we get it and we just don't pay attention to it or we don't, we just don't listen. Right. Like no, what, that's right. What, what do you have to do to hear that call? You know, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's important to say to anytime that I'm like, whether it's a small adventure, whether I'm like camping with my kids or whether I'm, you know, mountain biking or doing something like I try, if I'm, when I'm done with that activity, I, I literally tell myself, remember how good this feels, mm. right? 
remember how much, how the time you spent with your kids doing these activities, like how impactful that might be on their lives. Certainly how impactful it was on my life. Um, you know, I think it's really important to like, remember that. So next time you're feeling timid about like, oh gosh, I've got too much work or maybe, you know, I just don't have the time to do these things. Like you got to do it right. You got to go out there and make time for it. Um, hopefully that. Yeah. That's the question. You know, no, it's, it, it's amazing. I mean, um, you know, I guess is, I'm curious in terms of how you're sharing these kinds of life lessons, like with your children, like how, what are, what are some, some of the things that you're doing to sort of instill some of this in them? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, for me, it's a, um, I think with any generation, our generation, our kids' generation, like they deal with self-esteem issues, self-confidence, like finding their way in the world. Who am I? What am I, what are my purpose in this life? Um, I think when you strip personally, this is a personal opinion, when you strip away some of the things that are, that cause anxiety, whether it's, you know, teenagers and social media or screen time, you know, like video games, like when you can strip away some of that stimulus, I think it, it provides kids and adults really a path to see their own selves clearer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that, you know, getting outside and following the sense, this, you know, this pursuit of adventure, like, you know, you learn a lot about yourself by doing those things. Um, and I think the end, the end goal for me is to continue to help build my kids self-confidence so they can figure out who they are and who they want to be. Yeah. And then they can make an impact in this world. Yeah. I, th I think that's fabulous. And, and I do want to pull in real quick because I know that, you know, the last couple of years, it's been hard to go on adventures and to do things because of COVID. But yes. I happen to know that you you figured something else out to kind of create that adventure spirit at home and 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 truly find adventure in your backyard. What, what yeah. did you do to get through COVID? Yeah. <laughs> so to your point, like I'm I'm getting that, that itch. I got a scratch, right? Like, I'm like, Oh man, I got to get outside. I want to do this. I want to do that. And we took the leap and built this cabin in our backyard. Um, this guy, Kurt, who's done a bunch of house projects for us. He's a big outdoor guy too. And so I pitched this idea to him. I was like, I want to build a cabin in the backyard of my Charlotte, North Carolina house. And yeah. he's like, you're crazy, but I love <laughs> it. Let's do it. Yep. And so, and so I built this, you know, 18 by 20 structure, which has got a shed roof. It's, you know, Southern pine on the inside. We've stained it to look like reclaimed wood. Um, it is, it's got a wood burning stove in it and there's no, there's no TV. There probably will not be any computers or electronics. I have a, do have a record player. That is my one piece of technology in there, but it is our place to retreat to like when, when we're, and I told this to my kids and my wife, I'm like, if you're feeling like, Oh, like it's just too much, like something's going on in my life. that's just too much. Like use that as a place to go and relax and take a step out of your, out of your routine to, you know, to just kind of like take a deep breath. Right. Um, and we do that. We play board games down there. We share meals. We have a fire pit right outside of it. You know, this is our, this is our space. This is our safe space um, and our little cutout right here in our backyard. So yeah, and, and, 20 and, feet from the back door. <laughs> and that's the important part right here. This is not, yeah. you guys aren't living on a 10 acre farm. This is like, like yeah. you said, it's like what, 20, 20, 30 feet from the backyard. It's or from right. the back of the house. Right. Uh, it's but really I did, private. I did want to make a point that, you know, that the whole, like we, I don't want screen time out there. Like I want it to be somewhere where we can talk to each other. Right. Yeah. And then and, and talk about, memories of the family or like what we want to do, like our dreams about what we want to do as a family. And, you know, I think that's important to keep those open lines of communication and have a place to do that. What an awesome space. Yeah. Uh, and maybe if we're lucky, you'll share a couple of pictures we could put in the show notes so that, so that listeners can take a look and, and be inspired. Well, 
um, man, you, you inspire me. I love, like, I just love your story and, and how you've brought your kind of you bring your childhood back into what you're doing as an adult. Um, I just, I'd love to just kind of get your advice for, for people that might be listening that, that do have that call to adventure, but maybe they experience some of those same fears and doubts and, you know, tell themselves, well, I can't do that. Like what, what advice would you have for people like that? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, anything that's outside of your comfort zone might be a little scary, right? Um, I would say, take the leap. You know, if you're worried about failing or you're worried that you, you that you might, it might not be what you thought it was, like, there's only one way to find out, you know? And if you're, if you keep that open mind of what this venture might be, even if it's, a less than stellar experience or you don't achieve your goal, what you had set out for yourself, I guarantee you'll pull something away from it that you can find as a positive, something that you can bring back with you and say, you know what, I learned something else about myself or I learned, you know, what it, what it takes to, 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 you know, to finish the task or, you know, I think it's really important to like, just like go for it. Um, Cause in the end, it sounds a little cheesy. Like we've got one, we've got one life, right? Like we've got one, one trip around this, 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 this crazy world. And right. like, I want to, when I'm, when I'm an old man and I, unfortunately, you know, maybe will be too old to still go hiking stuff. I want to look back and say, you know what? I did not pass up any opportunity to really, to pursue that, that life of adventure. Yeah. I love that, man. I love that so much. And you've yeah. inspired me for sure to add some things to my list. I'm, I'm going up Mount LeConte sometime with those llamas. I can't wait to yes. do that. Yes. And, uh, and we'll do some trips together for sure. Um, yeah. but let's wrap this up. I've got two questions. I ask everybody that comes on, on the podcast. And first is when they make a movie about your life, cause you know, Hollywood's going to do that. You've, you've done some pretty incredible things. I want to know who the Hollywood actor is going to be. That's going to play you in this movie. I, look, I like George Clooney. I mean, oh, that might be a, yeah, man, that's that might be a stretch. What that a might be a stretch. Yeah, buddy. Oh, this, I love it. <laughs> George Clooney are always cool, calm and collected, you know, like I feel like every movie he's in, he's always, he always has like, he's somebody asks a question. He's got the perfect answer for it. Um, no, I, it's, I'm always aspiring to be the cool, calm, and collected guy. I'm not always that guy, but that's what I'm always trying to. You work nailed out. it, man! You <laughs> nailed it. I love it. Oh, that's awesome. So, what's your what's your movie going to be called? Get outside. Get outside, man. Speaking my language. I love it. Well, Matt, thank you so much for being here. And for those listening, I hope you have been inspired today as much as I have. I hope Matt's story has encouraged you to listen to the voice inside that calls you to adventure because we want to hear your story next. If you have a story to tell, or if you even need a nudge to create one, please send me an email. We'd also appreciate it if you'd help us spread the word by leaving a review and sharing or tagging Inspire Campfire in your social media. And until next time, I want to encourage you to get outside as Matt's movie is called. Thank you for listening. Matt, thank you so much for being here, my friend. Yeah, Scott, really appreciate it. I'm feeling inspired as well.